Welcome back to New York City at Madison Square Garden. Well, one bracket of the championship has been settled as Stanford came from behind over the final five minutes, beat St. John's in a nail biter, 55-53, outscored them 17-5 over the final five minutes. And now the matchup, the Big Ten of the ACC, the number 11 ranked for two Boilermakers of Gene Cady, taking on the eighth ranked North Carolina Tar Heels. And welcome back once again to the Garden. Joel Myers along with Dick Vitale. Phenomenal finish to the first game, especially if you're a Stanford fan. Now, Purdue in a difficult matchup. They lack the pure post players, some big guys for the Tar Heels, some young ones. Well, you know, you talk about the Tar Heels, they really reload. You talk about a team that really lost so much, losing Jamison and Carter, both guys, obviously great players, lottery selections. Well, you talk about North Carolina, the names are different, the Jason Cables, and certainly when you look at Chris Lang. But the bottom line is Ed Coda is in the house, and he's got the big guy, Mr. Haywood, who can operate down inside. Ed Coda from out of New York City can't wait to play here and this big guy Brendan Haywood's the guy they want to get him down inside take advantage of his seven feet be a space eater and dominate on the other side you look at Purdue Jerron Cornell he's got to come up big he only was two for 13 against Lafayette he is too good a shooter and there's a look at Gene Cady Mr. Intensity and with good reason 19 years at Purdue and we just saw Mark Matson call him Mad Dog. Well, Purdue's got their own version of Mark Matson. Brian Cardinal, the junior from Delano, Illinois. He gets it all done, hits the deck as he as, if he has to. A nine-point average so far this year. 12-point average last year to go along with five rebounds. And for Bill Guthridge in his second season, rookie coach of the year in the nation last year. Plenty of size and Okalaja, the experience down low the only senior in the starting five at 6'9 235 and an eight-point average last year did the little things well for the Tar Heels didn't have to score a lot of course because of Carter and Jamison and a couple of others but he's picked it up already this year Dick and we are ready to go three great officials Tim Higgins Rick Hartzell and Ted Valentine who just tossed it up as Purdue controls it to start the game and Mayfield he is going to start in the backcourt Tony Mayfield along with Alan Aldrin Mayfield moved over to play the point slot. Eldridge moved over to the second guard slot last year. Eldridge played a lot of point. He's a combination guard. One thing about Purdue, they'll always come to play with intensity. Cardinal can't give Purdue the lead. Ed Cota, the young man from Brooklyn, back home. He's back home. He told me he's got 30 people here, but he needed more. He needed more tickets. He couldn't get enough. Lang has been the unknown factor. Everybody knew he'd be a solid ball player, but he's been explosive at the offensive end for the Tar Heels. He was so effective against a good Georgia team at 21 big points. Cutter didn't get the roll, but Haywood's there. There's Brendan Haywood operating down inside. I think this big guy is going to get better and better. The season progresses. If he becomes a major factor in the lane, obviously North Carolina becomes a major factor. Cornell tied up by Haywood. Haywood made that ball go back to the outside. And Haywood all locked up down low as he draws the foul. Greg McQuay picked it up. There's little Haywood right now away from the basketball. He's going to set a screen, try to get a little back screen for his teammate Lang. Then he works on the inside, gets the good offensive rebound. He's got good touch for a big fella. Cotto will get a little help in the backcourt when he gets his guy, Ron Curry. As you look at Bill Guthridge, went to Kansas State along with Mr. Cady. 38-4, and four. what a way. 34-4 and four last year, 13-3 in the ACC, a journey to the Final Four, and replaced one of the greatest ever, ever to work the sideline, Dean Smith, the Michelangelo coach. Go to working against Mayfield. The back door, an easy one for Haywood. Just taking advantage of the great size. Arno got really taken in a situation, did not see ball, you man. You must see ball, you must see man all the time. Midpoint, they call it. We talked about Guthridge and Katie going to Kansas State together. They didn't just go to school together. They were roommates at Kansas State. Well, you know, he was right now, as we take a look right here, Mr. Haywood, we're going to see them come off the screen. There's the release, and there's the lob up on top. Freeze it! Look at the big guy. Look at the freezer right here. That little back screen and went right down the gun. Mr. Haywood with the easy layup. He looks active tonight. Looking for the long one, Eldridge. Eldridge, pretty good shooter from out of the perimeter. He's been really one of the dominant teams in the Big Ten the last six years. They're trying to go for a top McQuay. Looking for Lang. 
so many opportunities to post up against Gene Cady's squad. Take a look at this record here at Purdue. Unbelievable. Did a great job also in Western Kentucky in a short stay. Was on a great staff of Arkansas under Eddie Sutton. And Pat Foster went to the Final Four with the triplets. And they've taken the Big Ten title in three of the last five years. A lot of people forget about the recent success with Gene Cady. The inside, they got a size matchup problem down inside with Hagan. Hello! Getting that deep position inside. Trying to take advantage of that great size. Once Cardinal was out of position going for the steal, it was easy for Haywood. I'll tell you, Joel, great teams know how to execute. They know shot selection, and that's been a trademark on North Carolina. Cardinal drawing the foul on Lang. I'll tell you one thing about Cardinal. Houghton. He will not back up from anybody. This guy's a real Rambo man. There's the lob up on top. There's Haywood catching it. He knows what to do once he catches it. Little jam inside. You see a little reaction out of Mr. Haywood. Six straight for North Carolina over the first two and a half minutes to start the game. Five-point deficit now. It's Cardinal, an 80% free throw shooter last year, hits the first two. A workaholic at the free throw line compared to Mimatson. He's not exactly a favorite of opponents. Inspirational leader, though, for Gene Cady's squad. I'll tell you, he can play for me the way the guy scraps yes. the floors on a floor, plays hard. His dad, a trainer up in Illinois, where they're building something special. You better jump on Illinois this year because next year, Lon Kruger's team is going to be sensational. Capable with very few touches. And what a super freshman he is. We'll be talking about him as well tonight. Jeff Jones, brother Jason. Okalaja. And it was deflected on its way up. Jason Capel just understands how to play. Coach's family, dad, coach of old dominion, as we've said. Three guard offense, a very small lineup for but, Purdue. You know, they graduate Brad Miller and they lose Chad Austin. They lose two all Big Ten performers, but they reload and they're going to be certainly a factor all year in the Big Ten. The stroke of Tony Mayfield, the junior from Milwaukee, and it's only a two point ball game. Well, Mayfield really had a tough time shooting the ball against Lafayette as well. He and Cornell were very, very cold in that game. They were able to get that W at home. One of the great facilities, Mackey. I'll tell you, really exciting down there. Fun to do games down there as Gable had it scraped away. And on the scrub, alternating possession arrow, it belongs to North Carolina. So they'll keep it in the offensive end. Well, the one thing with North Carolina, they're going to get a lot of help when they get Ron Curry, a big-time winner, a high school All-American, McDonald's playing football right now. they got a date with North Carolina State on Saturday. And after the season's over, he'll be joining the basketball team. Also, they'll get basketball F the ball in early January. Go to walking with it. The turnover gets it back to Purdue as you're trying to put together. There's a look at Eftemoff right there playing the Long Island Lutheran. Got 16 game suspension because of the fact that he played with a club team over in France and they said several little players were getting paid. I thought the suspension was too severe for a young man yes. who only followed the instruction of the people who told him, if you want to make the French national team, you have to play on a club team. He didn't take a dime to kids. I mean, unbelievable. I think this penalty was too, too severe for Vasco. There's a matchup zone right now by North Carolina. Penetration for Mayfield. The nice dish. Almost a phenomenal play by McQuay. I'll tell you one thing, Joe. You better be able to make some perimeter jump shots against North Carolina because that size inside the gates a lot of the driving ability. Everything on the inside. Oh, what a great Okalaja going down low, Dakota. Okalaja with the great pass. The two big experienced players step up. Excellent execution. Typical North Carolina. An emotion game. Ball movement, player movement, and you usually get great results. Cornell lighting it up from beyond the arc. The junior from South Bend, Indiana. Yeah, South Bend, Indiana. Couldn't keep him at Notre Dame. Played for Clay High School. Big time long range shooter. He had an injury last year. They missed him down the stretch. They lost to Stanford in the NCAAs last year. Now Cornell led the Big Ten last year, hitting 50% of his three point fives. You can't leave Haywood alone. He could have taken it to the hole instead with a 10 footer. You're right, Joel. He should have put it to the deck and just went right to the basket. They did off. Back to back for Cornell. A little strong. And batted out of bounds. It'll belong to North Carolina. Last touch by Greg McQuay. A couple of McQuays. We'll see Gary McQuay as well off the bench for Gene Cady. North Carolina getting it inside early and often. And they lead by a point. With so much size on the baseline for North Carolina. Players like Okalaja as well as Brendan Haywood, the super sophomore, 
Gene Candy, as we had an opportunity to talk to him earlier today, knows going in tonight, they're going to have to hit the shots from the perimeter and capitalize on the transition. We're anticipating a little bit of a problem there, but hopefully our quickness out on the perimeter will make up for it uh, over the long haul, so we'll see. Right, if, we, if we're just going to play one-on-one, -on -one, we'll get beat because they got a lot more height than us. But if we can get up and down the floor and hopefully uh, neutralize that height with some quickness, we can stay in the game, we hope. I'll tell you one thing, Gene's right on the money right there, but he looked like a football coach there. You know, he was the last cut of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then he came back. As you look at the points in the paint, eight to zip. He came back to Kansas State, and he joined Bill Guthridge as a roommate, and then eventually got a job at Beloit High School, where they didn't have a football job, and they gave him a basketball job, and the rest is history. Five times he's been coach of the year nationally. Well, the matchup zone out of the timeout, and Mike Robinson in for Purdue. A little more size, number right. 23. Robinson will give him some point production as well. There's a lot of patience right now by North Carolina against the zone, trying to get into the seams of it. He'll get into gaps with his dribble penetration, Coda. And finishing just into the game, Max Owens, his first try of the night, the sophomore from Macon, Georgia. Well, I'll tell you, if Owens steps up and gives them positive minutes, he gave them positive minutes in their last game against Hampton, but they got a little bit scared when they went home for Ron Curry to bring them home to Hampton, but they ultimately won the game going away, but Owens came off the bench and got 10 points. Maynard Lewis with the ball. Getting the Cardinal also checking in. The freshman from Terre Haute. As Coda went for the steal, it still belong. The Purdue with 22 left on the shot clock. I think the beat goes out in North Carolina. They got a great one coming in next year. Joe Forte, tremendous scorer from out of Damatha High School. He'll be joining the North Carolina lineup. He plays with Keith Bogans now, a tremendous player who's going over right now to Kentucky as Michigan got a lead. As Iowa, Tom Davis in his last year going to miss Dr. Tom on that sideline. Eschmeyer, a good player down there at Northwestern for Kevin O'Neill. Virginia with a big romp tonight. I'll tell you, one guy that's recruiting big time, Peter Gillen. I mean, they got Travis Watson coming in. They got a kid, Majestic Map, right out of New York City. Bobby Gonzalez, one of the great young recruiters in America. Works for Peter Gillen. Stevens in for Purdue on the last whistle. He's prop 48 last year. Big, strong kid on the inside. They expect some big things out of him, but he couldn't practice last year, so he set him back a little bit. Lewis kept it alive, but Cota's got it. Cota excels in transition, is it? Lob, always looking for the open man. Max Owens couldn't convert. And the reach-in after Maynard Lewis came up with it. You know, last year on ESPN, these two teams had a real knockout affair up in the Great Alaska Shootout. It was a heck of a game. Purdue lost it in the last minute. Gene Cady, really club, uh, played well, but just came up short against Mr. Jameson and Mr. Carter. Uh, Haywood sits down. Okolaja just picked up the foul. Van Bursicker, another big guy at 6'10". They just keep rolling them in, don't they? A sophomore from Virginia beats Virginia you know, onto kid, the floor. A kid that, you know, role player, blocks some shots, run the court, but he's got that great size. Can't teach that seven feet, Joe. Patience in the offensive end by Purdue. They try to get a lot of motion, a lot of ball movement. And a beautiful look. That time, Cameron Stevens, the young man, the Prop 48, the sophomore from Fort Wayne, who sat out last season with his first basket. Well, I think Stevens and also Davis, the kid who was Prop 48, are going to really step up, ultimately, and be positive players on his club. So Purdue, like North Carolina, not timid about going to the bench early. They're going to a little zone right here, a little matchup. Trying to play a little 2-3 matchup. Normally, a man-to-man -man club with the size is presenting a problem for him. Owens couldn't convert after the miss by Okolajo, and Eldridge picks up a loose stop. A lot of quickness on his Purdue team. Cardinal trying to create a foul. They didn't give it to him, and Stevens finished it. Cameron Stevens coming off that bench, giving him a lot of good quality minutes right here. It looks like a smoothie kick. He goes 6'8", 220 pounds. Runs the floor well. Kodal, one of the back door cut. First sticker. Tough break. And Cardinal is fouled by Max Owens underneath. So all of a sudden, the momentum has shifted after an early 6 to nothing lead for North Carolina. Purdue has tied it up. And now they look for their first lead. I'll tell you one thing. When you can go to your bench and get positive minutes, it gives the team psychologically such a lift when they know people are going to come in and be very supportive. And Stevens certainly has done that in a few minutes he's been on the floor. Cornell. Working into the backcourt with Eldridge. Robinson, Stevens down to the baseline. And the other McQuay in for the first time. Gary McQuay wearing a number five. His brother Greg started. 
Very athletic. McQuay get up on a glass, can rebound, defend. Foul away from the ball as Mike Robinson was held by Jason Cable. Cable hasn't had it all that often. Not many touches in the offensive end, picking up his first foul in Purdue, looking for their first lead when we come back. A little more than eight minutes in, it is all even at 11, and we were talking about the depth of North Carolina. Let's not forget what Purdue brings off the bench. Players like Cameron Stevens. Well, you know, Stevens came out of Fort Wayne South High School, and he came in with big-time reputation. I had to sit out last year. There he is working the offensive boards. Had over 800 rebounds in high school. Did a solid job as you take a look here. Road to the Garden. He to Illinois, Chicago. Then got the win. Look at Jerron Cornell in his two games. Really did well shooting the three. Cornell never timid about putting it up. The junior from South Bend. Hey, Gary Indiana certainly did good to Purdue. They're from Quake Kids. And also Jamal Davis from out of Gary. Also a guy by the name of Glenn Robinson. He's a superstar of Purdue. Came out of Gary High. Gary Indiana. Another southpaw, McQuay. They've got a number of southpaws on this Boilermaker squad. A lot of lefties out there. McQuay with ideas. So much time now with a 45 second shot clock. You don't need to rush it. Robinson isolated against Cable. He's a big time offensive player. There he is with a little turnover, but he's a good, solid offensive player out of Peoria, Illinois. They cleared it out for him. They produced so many great players out of that city of Peoria. Manual High School has had so many great teams. Coach McLean, somehow playing for Illinois. Burr sticker working out there in the middle. Still Haywood on the bench. You know, last year, Bill Guthridge went to a simple rotation, had a super six, basically. This year, he's trying to utilize his bench a little more because guys have to earn their minutes. Give everybody a chance to earn some minutes early in the year. And he can really get his natural rotation. Coda, beautiful penetration move. That's a it was touched up top by Capel. It'll be wiped off. Yeah, Timmy Higgins wiping it off, playing with the ball up on the cylinder. Eddie Coda right down the gut, one of the premier diaper dandies in America. Look at Bill Guthridge there working that sideline. There goes Coda going down the lane. Gets inside the gap. Going to lay it up with the left hand. And there it is playing with the ball up on the cylinder. That's a no-no. Internationally, you can do that. Can't do that in college hoops. Can't play with it up on that cylinder. Good call by Timmy Higgins. They went back on the floor. It was a big-time factor early in the game. So the big lineup again with Haywood and Okalaja out there together. Burr sticker sits down. Otherwise, they'd have three guys better than 6'10". A lot of plays, good, strong man-to-man -man defense. Sliding through, talking to one another, communicating. Cornell shut down by Owens. A good position defense because obviously with great size like that, you don't have the super quickness. You can't penetrate all over. You can't pressure all over the floor. Inside of seven now on the shot clock. Eldrick way out there and didn't draw her in. I mean, that is downtown, baby. Shot that from North New Jersey. I mean, that was downtown. Oh, no. Stuck on 11 for a couple of minutes. A good read on the baseline, but Eldridge was on the baseline, so out of bounds, but boy, he saw the court. Well, that was always a trademark when you talk about Gene Cady's clubs. You don't win all those Big Ten titles, like you said, three in the last five years, unless they play on a defensive end. Defensive end. Campbell. Beautiful penetration move. I'll tell you, they're going to love Jason Capel. I mean, J.C. can flat out play. He's a very skilled player, understands how to play as well. He's always just so composed. Never wasting any energy out there. And the three from Gary McQuay and Purdue. Well, they give him three. No, they say he was on the line. It's tied at 13. Well, Gary McQuay steps up, knocks down that two. Left-handed stroke. He's a real lethal, super shot blocker for his size, as you mentioned, a phenomenal athlete. Probably went to West High School out in Gary, Indiana. Cable working against a smaller man. It's interesting they're not trying to post up the guards down low a little bit. Okalaja, beautiful dish. Max Owens finishes. Max Owens, I'll tell you, is going to become an active player. On the inside's going to earn a lot of PT. He's been a guy who came in with a big-time high school reputation on Mount Zion. Quay wanted to hit the three ball. He likes it on the floor, though. Okalaja choking off the paint. So, a much smaller lineup for the Boilermakers of Purdue, but they're hanging tough for the first 11 and a half minutes. I think one thing about 
with Elijah. He understands how to play on a defensive end. He's a solid defensive player. Pick for Cornell. Came from McClay. And boy, did that have been picked out down low. Cable over there with a win. People play the St. John's basketball under Stu Vetter. Also coached guys like George Lynch in his earlier days. Serge Zwicker, Mike Pepper as well. Yeah, well played for that thing, Ronnie. That's why you're right on top of it, Joel. I like that, man. You're right on top of it. I'm reading your recruiting list. Wow. 8-12 left. Owens is going to sit down. Michael Brooker in for the first time for North Carolina, the sophomore from Sandersville, Georgia. He's a kid they're hoping that becomes an outside shooter because that's the one area they're concerned about. North Carolina making that perimeter jump shot. Came in with the big-time reputation of a long-range jump shot, but they have not been able to get him to produce like they think that he's capable of doing. A little matchup here. Tony Mayfield back onto the floor for the Boilermakers. Out top of that matchup. Always looking to try to attack the gap. Cardinal almost saved it, and it is going to go. As will they say, it was last touched by Haywood. Yes, when we come back. It'll be a two-point lead for North Carolina. North Carolina dominated Georgia last Wednesday to get to New York. They're not dominating Purdue so far, though. Sunday night, 8.15 Eastern, John Oway back into the lineup along with Terrell Davis. Well, the Broncos be 12-0 after their matchup in San Diego with the Chargers where they just won Super Bowl 32. And then on Monday night on ABC Sports, 8 o'clock Eastern, the New York Giants coming off a win finally. They head west to take on the 8-3. San Francisco 49ers. Jerry Rice with a touchdown reception in that last one. The 31-20 win over the New Orleans Saints. Well, you mentioned Denver. John Elway to Cardinal. Stanford grad probably was watching that first game. Probably was watching the game out there. John Elway. And like the way Matson was banging. Wow. Maybe he'll be a tight end for me down the road. He doesn't need any help. Just give the ball to Davis. When in doubt, say Terrell. Take us to the winner's circle. Mayfield almost got it away, and Cornell will now from Haywood, but it's thrown away. Cardinal keeps up with it, though. They've got the advantage, the numbers. And they'll slow it down. Running a lot of touches out of each possession, trying to reverse the basketball, looking for a good percentage shot. Something that's a trademark also of Purdue basketball under Gene Cady. Discipline, shot selection, playing the defensive end. Chris Lang out of the timeout, back on the floor with the starters for North Carolina. Two-point lead for the Tar Heels. Seven minutes and 13 seconds left. Cardinal hooked up with Lang. It's a hold on Lang. Well, they try to take advantage of the freshman inside against the experienced player on Brian Cardinal. That's two already on Lang. They'll try to go after him to get three. Good execution right there by Purdue to get the ball inside to try and create that opportunity for the experienced Cardinal. Lang was Mr. Basketball in North Carolina last season. Hit 21 last Wednesday night on ESPN and the win over Georgia. Played really well. Very active player. Made some good plays. Plays with a lot of emotion. Mayfield gets a step, but Brendan Haywood's there. Yeah, it's really tough to take the ball and get some scores inside with that great size you're going to face with Haywood at 7 feet and Lang inside at 6'10". People on a wing at about 6'8 as well. Too much help down low. Tenacious defensive work for Purdue to start the game, mixing up their defenses. Yeah, they've got multiple defenses, played a little matchup, now back to the man-to-man. -man. Moving pick on the far side by Brooker. Got to be stationary with that screen as you look at the brain trust. David Hanners, Bill Ford, Pat Sullivan, along with Bill Guthridge, all wore the colors of North Carolina. They all understand the tradition and the pride of being a North Carolina player. I was telling Phil today, you were one of the best point guards ever. He said, no, not me. You got to think of Isaiah Thomas and Magic. I said, Phil, let me tell you, on a collegiate level, they didn't come any better, baby, at that point. Now, he a, was brilliant. What a flyer he was. Talk about playing. speed in the backcourt. Oh, the four corners. They used to go Dean Smith to that four corners. You waved the white handkerchief because it was all over, baby. There was no shot clock. You spread the court, and he just dominated. Mayfield can't capitalize. That was already with 17 fouls. So shooting the rest of the way, the Boilermakers up for Duke, and they capitalize. So with six and a half minutes left in the half. It's that typical motion game, reversing the basketball, swinging it side to side. And Haywood with a side-to-side -side elbow in the direction of one of the little guys. It looked like Eldridge. So they'll be back to the free throw line. Uh, two possessions now, no shot. And that's a lack of experience. First foul on Brendan Haywood. Super sophomore, 7-footer, 265-pounder. 
second man off the bench last year. Got into 38 games. What an experience to be on a team like that with Jamison and Carter and get that much time. Came out of Greensboro, North Carolina. You think of the ACC, I'll tell you, one of the great conferences of all time in college basketball. So much spirit, so much unbelievable excitement in the ACC this year. I mean, we're hearing nothing but raves about Maryland and Steve Francis and Obina, Akizi and company. We know about Duke's club. I mean, they got nine big-time players. I mean, they got guys that really are what we call major league big-timers. And Elton Brand, certainly a, a leading candidate to be a player of the year kind of personnel uh, per, uh, player. And then you talk about Trajan Langdon and that tremendous jump shot and William Avery developing. I mean, they're a dominant club. McQuay kept it alive after his miss. So now Purdue again with the opportunity to take their first lead. And the time on a couple of occasions for the Tigers. Big question, can North Carolina sustain that unbelievable track record since 1965? One, two, and three in the ACC. That's just an amazing achievement. Well, all those numbers for North Carolina. 32 consecutive years in the ACC top race. Oh, they nice get it low out. to McQuay. And Purdue does have their first lead. Nice but also, out. as you mentioned, the 28th great season of 20 or more wins in 24 consecutive years in the NCAA tournament. That's amazing. Rooker for three. See, that's what they and Cardinal of. and Haywood battle. Haywood comes up with the tip. They want Rooker to be able to knock that shot down. Bill Gutsy's giving him some minutes. Because with the penetration of Cody, that shot will be available. Greg McQuay made a nice play to Juco player, a little more versatile than his brother. And Cardinal with a jump hook from about 10, 12 feet away. That was by design, obviously. Yeah, not pretty, but it goes down. That's all that counts. He's a productive player. Don't give you points how stylish it is. It was third team all Big Ten last year. Gotta take him to the sideline right here. And he rotate out of man back into his zone. Matching up. Review by a point. Cable looking for his first points. And losing it. Get up along to the Boilermakers. Gene Cady likes the effort because they have been doing exactly that. Tons of effort at the defensive end of the floor to hold North Carolina. It's only 17 so far. Don't forget, go online ESPN.com. Look at all the news and notes from ESPN. Talking about Ed Cota, the assist man for the Tar Heels of North Carolina, coming home tonight. Back to Brooklyn. And you can go down low with Len Elmore every Wednesday on ESPN.com to answer all of your questions. Great chat session with Len Elmore on Wednesday. Log on to ESPN.com. Penetration move. Eldridge gets it to go and almost drew the foul as well. Well, as Eldridge working along that baseline last year, he was playing the point guard slot. He should have moved him over to the second guard slot in the scoring position. He's a good long range shooter, shows some driving ability. Dota got away from Lewis. Oh, score the basket. Score the basket. He beats Lewis, the freshman, hits to the lane, but he's going to beat a lot of people. Ed Cota is one of the real diaper dance, I mean, real super point guards in college basketball. Of Thomas Edison, he innovates and creates things you can't teach. And there's the goaltending. Can't play with that ball when it's coming down, baby. And, you know, we had a pretty good look at it from our angle. It didn't look like it was going to go down anyway. But Greg McQuay got there late. McQuay with the good legs. And there's the official. Anytime it's in front like that, it's inevitably going to be called in front of the rim. Coda, when you think about great point guards, Colin Elamine, certainly down at Connecticut. But Team Cleves, you got to love his leadership ability down at Michigan State. I mean, I love the kid at Kentucky, Wayne Turner, with his penetration ability. And you got to have those kind of guys if you want to get in the winner's circle. Go to has four as North Carolina is down by one. Four minutes left in the opening now. North Carolina rotates out of the man into the zone. Lang playing the baseline of the zone. Rotating the baseline. Cornell. A couple of Tar Heels there, and Haywood saves it. And yeah. first sticker down low, too. Cornell can shoot that jump shot. He can go down that time. He's got to be able to the offense. Nice Cota pass. Sutter step and freeze his first sticker. Just lost the handle, but you're right. Okolaja found it down low. Perfect position. First sticker's got to finish. And they got a lot of size out there with Haywood and first sticker. Look at that size. Two seven footers. You're talking about some towers, baby. Scott Frederick also out there for North Carolina for the first time off that last whistle. See, I think it's really smart of Bill Guthrie to try to get his. Big kids, some experience earlier in the year now in first sticker, and certainly Haywood's going to be the starter in there, but getting guys like Owens and first sticker some quality minutes. Looker as well. Stevens blocked by first sticker, the seven-footer you were just talking about. 
And Lewis coming back to take it away. Andrew Lewis with a good steal. Needs help. Burstaker jumping out on him, too. Well, made, him, active. made him change his shot there. Nice pass. pass. Beautiful to Cornell. Great cut without the basketball. A little slash, a little shuffle cut, a little baseline cut. Good movement without the basketball. Look at Gene Kennedy. Look at that intensity. Look at that emotion. Super pass by Cameron and Stevens. A three-point lead once again for the Boilermakers. Two and a half minutes left in the opening 20 minutes of play. Cameron Stevens has really been a quality performer. He's getting some QT, some quality time. He's earned it. Let's go to once again in the lane. Wants to make something happen in the lane. Did exactly that, but didn't capitalize after he lulled Lewis to sleep with a stutter step. got to get Cornell some looks from that baseline. Carolina with six turnovers, Purdue with only one. Eldridge around the bigger guy, Ogalaja. And what a kiss off the window. Alex Eldridge with a little drive down the lane. Splashes it off the glass. Largest lead at five for Purdue. I'll tell you, look at the Big Ten. You think about Purdue and Indiana is certainly going to make a run this year. They're going to get better and better as the kid Hastings develops on the inside. Minnesota came back last night. Quincy Lewis was sensational. They were down big to Seton Hall. But came back with Chris Bella as he develops the young freshman from Haskins Club. Going to be a factor in the Big Ten. Well, we know the ACC is going to be rock solid. The Big Ten. We saw a team for Pac-10 earlier tonight. It's Okalaja looking for his three. Well, it ended up in ugly territory for him. Jammed right up by the shot clock. The Boilermakers surprising everybody and getting it down low. We're going to take a look right now of a nice flashing baseline cut without the basketball by Cornell and how Cameron Stevens fouled, finds him cut and slash basketball. We're going to watch it right here. We're going to watch the ball reverse right here. Freeze it right here. See, he makes that slashing move across that baseline. Comes into that area, and there it is, and he's got himself a layup on the interior. Nice little baseline Cut, cut and slash basketball by Gene Cady and Purdue. I'll tell you one thing, look at his body right now. He can't cut and slash. He's a member of my old wide body team here. Look at my man, Gene Cady. He is one of my all time favorites. Oh, he when is I too. I love him. yesterday and he introduced him. I love him. I'll tell you, I we love his fun. He says, every time he says, you don't understand, the word is Purdue. You never say Purdue. You always say it Hoosiers, Hoosiers. A little more than a minute left. Been a surprising start to this contest with Purdue on top of North Carolina, the much smaller border makers. Well, Cardinal with a good screen down low. And Cornell fills it up from three-point land. Seven-point advantage. Somebody, and now they're going to say it was only good for two. Somebody's got to match up on Cornell and take away any open shots because he gets time to look at the hoop that's going down. Good active man-to-man -man now to come out of the matchup. Nice pass by K. Cole. It'll be a charge. Cardinal took it. Line Cardinal rotated over. I thought Cable looked like he's coming under control. By the way, Roy Williams is going to be in the studio at halftime with Bill Pito and Digger Phelps going up on area at halftime. Report coming up in just a couple of minutes. Seven-point lead for the surprising border makers. <coughs> Shocker so far with less than 40 seconds left in the half. Purdue up by seven on the eighth-ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina. Roy Williams in the studio with Bill Pito and Digger Phelps. Stanford St. John's highlights from the first half of our Chase NIT. Preseason doubleheader. Roy's oh, in the studio Roy's and son. Scott's with us. Courtside, sophomore from Lawrence. Yeah, he played with Brad Frederick on a high school team and did an outstanding job together. His sister goes to North Carolina as well. And I'll tell you this, Roy Williams had a good win over Penn. A lot of people said, oh, they had a struggle with Penn. Penn beats Temple, and Penn is a legitimate basketball team, people, especially at the Palestra. And I'll tell you one thing, I'm not that shocked with Purdue leading right now. Purdue's got a lot of experienced people back, but Carolina is still trying to find themselves, Joel. Cornell. Starting to hit from the outside the second 10 minutes of this half. Mayfield with the clock winding down, setting up Cornell. Good idea. Can he finish? A little bit short. Okay, he was and it goes off of Robinson. It'll belong to North Carolina. With two tenths of a second left. He was challenged right there by the big guy. You give up the basketball, Bill. Come on, give it up. He played for Kansas State, went to the Final Four one year. Bill Guthridge, what a staff they have when they had Eddie Fogler, Roy Williams, and Bill Guthridge on the same staff with Dean Smith. Hey, by the way, you know our buddy.
Dave Sims of ESPN. His father-in-law was honored before yeah, tonight's game. Norm Corson, who was a great referee, did the Chase NIT. He won the officials' award here before the game. Great official for 20 years, NCAA, NIT oh, games. Tremendous zebra. I mean, did a phenomenal job. Hey, you know, Purdue's going to be also in the Jimmy V Classic December 22nd when they hook up against South Carolina and Eddie Vogler. And then it's Kentucky and Duke. Sold out. Unbelievable. In a memory of Jimmy V. And I know he's going to be smiling up in heaven knowing those teams are playing for him. And I just hope anybody out there has been touched by Jimmy V just remembers to make a donation to the Jimmy V Foundation. Just call one 800 for Jimmy V Glad you and brought put it, it in to that dreaded disease. Glad you brought it up, Parker. That's going to be some night down you there. Kentucky and Duke. Wow. Purdue, South Carolina. The volleyball. Brian Cardinal, you didn't know he was the <laughs> lead volleyball blocker player. up there. But Jerron Cornell started to come alive. He led the Boilermakers offensively in the first 20 minutes of play. Found that stroke. He's been their leading scorer before. The junior from South Bend. So a seven-point lead in the surprise so far in New York for Purdue over North Carolina. And we head back to the studio to rejoin Bill Zito. Bill? All right, Joel, thank you very much. Coming up at halftime, yours truly along with Digger Phelps and Kansas coach Roy Williams will be along to provide some insight on what's going on so far with his basketball team. All that and much more as we're coming back at you with halftime after this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the Chase Preseason NIT is brought to you by Egghead. We're not just software anymore. Egghead.com. Shop three times smarter. The Stanford Cardinals of Pat 10 has already earned a spot of the championship of the Chase Preseason NIT. And who's going to be the other one? In that final on Friday night, the Boilermakers of Purdue or the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Right now, Boilermakers are up by seven at the break. Joel Myers along with Dick Vitale. And welcome back to the Garden in New York. One characteristic of a Gene Candy team, they don't beat themselves. They don't make a lot of mistakes. They turned it over only one time. Well, you know, they turned it over one time. The one thing with North Carolina, they can't attack you defensively because of all that size. And when you look at Purdue, they got good execution. Cornell certainly made some big plays. But you also talk North Carolina's got to get involved a little bit more offensively by getting people like Ogalaja to score. We're going to take a look at Cornell, a little package here, a little isolation with the one-on-one -on -one move. Then we're going to see him working the little jump shot. He can stroke the J. And now we're going to see him move without the basketball, a little diagonal cut along the baseline. Very active. Cornell did a solid job scoring nine. But look at the totals right here. Free throws, zero for zero. That means you're a little passive. You're not attacking the glass. North Carolina's got to get to the glass a little more. Three-point shooting, really both clubs struggling. One for nine and one for four. Let's see if North Carolina with the ball and Ed Cota from Brooklyn gets a little more aggressive to start the second 20 minutes of play. Instead, McQuay takes it away from Lang and then loses it. So the opportunity was there early. You know, that came 0 for 0 in that first half. Also, Adam Ocalaja was 0 for 4 in the first half. Do we get great reaction shots from Gene Cady? Yeah, I'll tell you. He's amazing. <laughs> he gives you a show on that sideline. He and Gary Williams, man, are really active. Not even a little 2-2-1 pressure. See how Cable and some of the youngsters for North Carolina because you've got two sophomores, two freshmen out there right now. See, I think you've got too many unselfish guys. I think Cable's got to look for a shot a little bit more. He's too good of an offensive player, and I think Ed coda has got to take a little bit more shot. Cable only took one shot in the first half off the leg of Eldridge. Well, you try to spin dribble, they'll step right in on that immediately. McQuay rejected by Haywood. Pinned it against the glass legally. Haywood with a good block. Teddy Valentine right there. Yeah, it's available. That's what they got to do. Get a little transition. Ed Cota with the great eyes. Here he is. He's home. He's in New York City. He's at the Big Apple. Tilden High School. And he went to St. Thomas Moore in Connecticut. I get excited over Ed Cota. One of my favorite players to watch play. Understands the game. Good basketball IQ. Easy Ed in the garden. What a thrill for him to come home. Years ago, easy. He had a guy, got it. Ed McCauley. He is something for the Celtics, as well as the Billiken first, then the Celtics and the Hawks, too. And the stroke again. Cornell's got 10, and they're up by 8. The Boilermakers up for due. How did the Irish let him get out of the city of South Bend? I mean, Digger and company out there shouldn't even let that kid out of the city. Play high school at South Bend. Don Cloud should have locked up the city and not let anybody get in here. Cable had it poked away. Talk about a gnat and a pest. Cornell's all over him out there. 
Too much, a lot of size. The kid going to go inside and try to post it a little bit. Coda against Mayfield. Nice pass. Up. And Hayward authoritatively on the weak side. Well, you know, Hayward with a good inside position from the offside. Lang with that little jump hook. He's got a nice jump hook. He didn't go down that time. He's got an excellent jump hook matching up now with Cardinal. Those are high percentage tries. He's got 10. He's 5 of 6. McQuay it. He'll go to the line. Working the big guy down low, Brendan Haywood. Well, I'll tell you, McQuay showing that experience from out of the junior college. Lang's out of Southern Idaho Junior College. Jim Crash now an assistant coach here. As you watch McQuay working a the baseline, there he's with a little power move, squaring his body. Now take a look here. Thomas Edison. Here he goes. Mr. Coda. I mean, look, look at Mr. Coda. A little shake and bake time. Very little Mr. Coda. A little show time. I'm in New York City. Now look at a great look. Oh, what a great look down to the box inside. And there's Haywood from the offside. And you were just talking to the young man going to the free throw line, Greg McQuay, the transfer from Southern Idaho Junior College, as he looks for the three point play. It has been said because Gene Kane is kid coach of the Junior College ranks for just about 10 years. There's a soft spot for Junior College players as far as he's concerned. Well, he did a great job at Hutchison Junior College, the Hall of Famer, as you call that, Gene Kane. Nine point lead as they convert on the three point play, and that is the biggest lead of the night for the Boilermakers. Cable denied. Cardinal on the baseline. You talk about a heads-up player. Purdue has really done a great job defensively. The only player that had a tough time defending tonight has really been Haywood down on the inside. And there's a look right there. Heads-up play by Cardinal. Almost thrown away. His size inside has really been a problem, but everyone else they have really negated. They've been really controlled. Even Ed Coda, as talented he is, they have kept him under control in terms of penetrating. Cable against Cornell. Now will they post up the bigger table? No. Goes away from the basket. Coda, shot clock down to seven. And they save it. A break for Purdue as he went right to Mayfield. Mayfield doing a good job on a defensive end. There he is to his buddy Cornell on a wing. They got some good wing shooters when they're Cornell and Elton John Floor. Cornell for three. Doesn't get it. A little bit short. Nine-point lead. Are you surprised so far? No, not really shocked at all. Purdue's an experienced basketball team. I think North Carolina's going to go through a little growing pains early in the year. I think they're a club that will get better as the season progresses, and they get a guy like Curry and F. the ball as well. I mean, they're certainly careful coming back in this game and winning it. I mean, we've known about North Carolina in a great tradition. They got to hold outside on Cornell. But you brought up a good point. You don't get to the free throw line, you're not aggressive enough at the break. You gotta attack the basket. You gotta really attack the basket, take advantage of your size inside, try to post up and go to the basket to get to that line. Mike Robinson coming in, a little bit larger lineup now for the Boilermakers. He brings some offense, he's got an offensive package. See Lang inside now, he's got a lot of size. He's gonna throw it inside to Lang. That's Dan good. Haywood. Got it, with the ball. I'll tell you, tough to handle them on a boxes inside. Once they get in deep, I'm really impressed with the development of Brendan Haywood. He seems to be a kid getting better and better. I think there are a lot of special big kids. If they get better and better, their teams will get better and better. Here's one right here, and Eric Chenoweth is certainly another one as well down in Kansas. Kirk Hasted. We're going to watch him down on the inside. See, watch the post play in here. They're going to try to get him the ball down in the box. There it is inside, and there's that jam, baby. Just a quick, quick explosion, explosiveness to the basket. And it took 24 minutes, but finally North Carolina got to the free throw line as Hayward couldn't convert. Great save on the sideline by Okalaja. He hustles. I'll tell you, one thing about Okalaja, he gives you all the little things that it takes to win. There's a little baseline screen inside. A little game being played by Lang and Hayward along that baseline. Hayward working against Cornell, and the slot came from the play. Well, see, that's created with a little horizontal screen where they're screening for one another across the lane. So the high school player of the year in North Carolina two years ago, Brandon Haywood, Greensboro, going to the line. See, we're going to see him go across the lane and set some screens down on the inside. There they are, little screen, there comes Lane. Now he's going to step back to the ball. See, right there's another screen, a little two-man game they play. Said, give me the rock now. Get it inside to me. I'm going to take it to the goal. Look at the big fella. They grab him by the arm. He's going to develop into being a heck of a big player. But I think there are certain big players, if their teams are going to advance and elevate, they have to step up. For Hastings tonight in a game with Indiana against Syracuse, Eric Chenoweth, as we said, down at Kansas, I think he's going to be a solid player. Haywood's another one. Chris Smith down in Texas. 
Underwood gets one of two. It is still a six-point lead for Purdue as Cameron Stevens led a sensational first half. Has the ball. And he's back onto the floor. She has that motion game swing side to side. Carolina had a little bit more ability last year, obviously, the pressure when they had guys like Carter and Shavon Williams. You know, we talked about the loss of Jamison and Carter, but people forget about Shavon Williams. He was a big-time college player. Rare turnover. Four and a half minutes into the second half, a six-point lead for the Boilermakers up for doing this ACC Big Ten matchup. And don't forget tomorrow night, midnight Eastern, the number one team in the nation, the Blue Devils of Duke. Elton Brand, Alaskan native Trajan Langdon, heading home to face the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Join us midnight Eastern tomorrow night on ESPN. I tell you, talk about all the great environments in college basketball. Duke just unbelievably stands out as certainly one of the finest down at Cameron Indoor Stadium. I mean, the students are right on the floor. Elton Brand, a fighting Irish, going to have a tough time trying to defend him. But they got a good-looking freshman, Troy Murphy. He's going to become a special player at Notre Dame. Capo just for the ball. He's going to be the second shot of the night. I'll tell you one thing, Joe. He's going to start to think offense a little more. He's too talented. He's too offensively talented not to think shot. He's not thinking enough for offense, offensively. Well, you mentioned the high school team last year to the national title. Yeah, he was a brilliant player at the high school level, and he's going to be a brilliant player on the collegiate level. Five points to see the three-pointer. It's only a three-point lead now for the quarter makers, and we've got a moving kick by Robinson yes, on the weak side. Benny Valentine right on it, and that's one of the points of emphasis this year, is contact away from the basketball. You know, Digger and, and Roy Williams alluded to it and did a great job talking about how the defenses are ahead right now of the offenses. I also think, take it one step further, I think the good basketball teams have become so sophisticated defensively and have such a pride in themselves defensively that it really creates so many problems for the offense. Haywood from Cable, the good look inside. There's that unselfish, typical North Carolina basketball. Always making that one extra pass. 15 points for Brendan Haywood. Get eight rebounds to go along with the 15. And he is 7 of 8 from the field. I tell you, he's got to build his confidence. A performance in the Big Apple at the Mecca and Madison Square Garden. playing so well. All of a sudden, a one-point ball game. McQuay asking for it against Haywood. Throw it back out. <laughs> Throw it back out. McQuay. Good stroke. He's the righty. His brother's the lefty. The junior college transfer, Greg McQuay. I'll tell you, Greg McQuay really looks like he's going to be a positive force here. Very athletic. He's got a good stroke. Versatile player, and now they're going into the zone. Eight points for Greg McClay. Well, they say he's a year older than his brother and much more mature from the junior college experience. Such a well-coached team. Good to really understand the game defensively. Kids play so hard. The first commandment in competition is thou shalt play hard. And they do that all the time. Tough pass for Lang to handle. And they call the walk. The intention was solid for Okalaja to get it down low. Hey, happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. You're going to take me to turkey dinner. We're going to eat with all the teams tomorrow. Hey, New York, New York, we got to say this. The Yankee Clipper. want to wish him happy birthday, happy number birthday. five, Joe DiMaggio, and wish him a speedy recovery. I'll never forget one of the first superstars I've ever seen in my life was a young kid. He was so sweet. I mean, he's the only guy in the Hall of Fame who never made a great catch because he was always there waiting for the ball. He never had to be spectacular. 84, he was 84 years old today. Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? Please don't go anywhere. God bless you, Joe. Wish you the best. Play movement without the ball. For Purdue. About seven minutes into the second half, Cornell. And the break as it's kept alive by Lewis. McQuay looking for back to backers. Robinson with a good hand. Mike Robinson, the junior from Peoria, Illinois. It's a big time score on the high school levels. Had some big, big moments at Purdue. You know, Mike Ward, number 32 last year, but he worked with Michael Jordan summer camp in Chicago over the summer. He couldn't believe the intensity. Excellent from Jordan. He's switched to 23. Oh, what a play right there by Jason Cable to create that opportunity. We were having a bowl or Okalaja. He made that happen with that slashing drive down the lane. The easy finish. I like, love Jason Cable. I just think he's going to be a special Carolina player. Right back to the other fan zone. In 95, when they lost Wallace and Stackhouse, everybody thought it would be a tremendous demise. They came back and won 21 games, lost 11, went to the NCAA tournament, finished in the top three. A young freshman came in the name of Antoine Jameson. Has to do with that patience and poise against the zone. Nice step in the gap. Lewis lost the handle. As always, was jumping out on him. Toto looking for the trailer. Oh, oh, 
Max Owens. Coming over the back, he got away with it. There he goes, right to Robinson. They got numbers. They got numbers. And Stevens had him on his left one. Good yeah. control. Yeah. Higgins with the goal. Good goal by Higgins. After Purdue led by as many as nine, North Carolina storming back. Only a three-point lead for the Boilermakers. Haywood and Bochy getting an inside. Two of the most consistent programs in all of college basketball. On the floor at Madison Square Garden, the Boilermakers of Purdue and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Of course, you think of North Carolina in those terms automatically. A lot of people, though, Dick by Dow, forget about what Purdue has done over the last decade as well, besides the last five years with three Big Ten titles. Such five. consistency, and then the heartbreaking loss by eight to Stanford in the Sweet 16 last year. Well, five NCAA appearances as well. Gene katie has been coach of the year nationally five times. He's done a phenomenal job, and they love their basketball down at Purdue. The fans really get after it. Hackey is an unbelievable place to go there. They've got a great basketball climate. The fever there is unbelievable. What about the women's team? Congratulations, a big win over Tennessee. And then they lost to Stanford. Well, they haven't done that badly against Bobby Knight's in recent years either. Oh, a nice play right there. Taylor from easy and go to backing up Cardinal inside. Well, that's just a great basketball IQ by Cole. A little two-man game. He knows it's an Eminem or it's a mismatch. They can't handle Haywood inside. Cardinal drawing the foul. He had Lang, the freshman, on his hip. See, inside, we're going to see Coda right here, and I'm going to see him shape it up into the lane and dump the ball right into the post. We're going to watch Haywood. There it is right now. Look at him drop step, spin move, little single reverse, and then there's the jam. Great two-man play. Another look inside. There's Haywood. Can't handle him inside. Too big and strong. Nothing Brian Cardinal at 6'8 could do against the 7 foot. Brendan Haywood as Cardinal misses the first of two. He's not only 7 feet, he's wide. He takes a lot of space inside. He is really learning how to finalize, how to convert once he touches the ball. Cardinal needs to be in double digits for them to be successful. I think Cowboy talked about the loss of Austin and Miller. They contributed 34 points a game last year. I think Cowboy Joe Tiller, who does a great job in football for them, would love to have him in a, on a football field as a tight end. What a quarterback they got. I love their quarterback, Drew Brees. Yes. Oh, I love him. I left a message for him on his reporter. Told him how awesome he is. I think he is super. Two-point lead for the border makers. But you know what they call that? Attack. It's the basketball attack on grass. I tell you, he can play the football like Drew Brees. I love him. Get out of Austin, Texas. As you watch that photo, try to penetrate. Oh, look at a great look inside. Oh, hello, oh, hello. Great vision, I'll tell you. He can flat out pass the rock, baby. Eddie Cota, one of America's dynamic, I mean dynamic point guards. The deflection, but still, it went to Robinson. It was a nine-point lead early in the second half for Purdue. As Cardinal lights it up from beyond the arc and breaks the deadlock at 37. Frank Cardinal says, hey, big man, try to check me out away from the basket. Come out here. I'll show you I can shoot the rock. He had 43%. His three-point attempts last year. Go to say, it's my show now. Give me the rock. It's my show. I'm going to be the bomb. Stuart Scott calling. I'm going to be the bomb. You know, Stuart, by the way, and Isaac make great music together. And Stuart Scott went to North Carolina. Two possessions ago, Ed Cota. Great vision. Oh, what great vision by Cota. Look at that tremendous log. Eddie Cota's been passing the rock all his life. Just loves to give it up. And last year, he had three guys that could really convert once he gave it up. Williams, certainly Jameson, and Carter. Led the ACC in assists in each of the last two seasons. First star here to do that since Bill Forty. We were talking about it on the bench, the assistant coach. Ford did it in free spray, 74, 75, and 76. Well, he's second coming back in the nation in assists. The first is a kid named Chico Fletcher, who I've never seen play. You look at Bill Ford. I think a guy I would love to see play. Why don't you get me a game then? I want to see Wally's World. I want to see Wally <laughs> Serbiak. I mean, Mr. Serbiak down in Miami of Ohio, plays for my buddy Charles. Charlie Coles. I'm so happy to see Charlie back on the sideline. Serbiak had a big win last week. Oh, Serbiak. How did the biggies let him get away? Six assists for the young man with the ball. Ed Goda. Yes, sir. They're pulling a lot more of that this year. Point of emphasis. That last That's foul right. reaching, by the way, on Gary McQuay. And all of a sudden, 16 fouls on Purdue, where North Carolina put Purdue at the free throw line. In the opening 20 minutes of play with about six and a half minutes left in the half. Now, the bonus situation with the next foul for North Carolina. Mike Nichols does a great job with the officials. He's got these guys really looking at that this year. That five-second count. 
Trying to spread the floor. They want to take the big guy away. See, they want to take Haywood away. Cardinal says, come on, check me out of here. I don't want to go inside with you, big guy. I'm stepping away. See, come on, big guy. We're going to open it up inside. Try to open up the lane. Try to take him one-on-one. -on -one. Draws it. Yes, sir. There it is. The Cardinal. The catalyst. Back to a five-point lead. Five straight and all five from that young man, Brian Cardinal. Little clinic right there. Just a little isolation. Bringing the big guy away from the basket. Taking him one-on-one. -on -one. Somebody's got to come over and give some help when that happens. Yeah, but Haywood's got to get up at the strong side of the riding anyway. Got to pass Cardinal on the entry from Okalaja that time. And two free throws coming up for Brendan Haywood. He's going to have to convert on the inside. Take a look Cardinal right now. See, he's got the big guy away from the goal. Now he's going to drive to the basket. And there he is. Seals him off really well with his body. Protects the basketball. Gets the conversion. Haywood. 17 so far. He's 8 of 9 from the field. He's got that nice touch on a free throw line. Looks like he's really worked on developing that. He's a kid that looks like he has gotten better and better from last year. If he makes the next, he'll match his career high with 19. And he's done exactly that still with 9.07 left. 19 for Haywood. Nice school. Kentucky's another school that seems to always develop some big guys. You don't think about, like this year, Michael Bradley will become a contributor for them. 6'11". Tommy Smith's got himself a heck of a club. He lost the last goal. Nazi Mohammed, who should have stayed in school, and lost Jeff Shepard. Patience at the offensive end. From the border makers of Purdue, no surprise for the Gene Cady team. And a hold away from the ball on Haywood. See, they're taking Haywood away from that basket. You may see Bill Guthridge go to a little 2 3 matchup and keep Haywood in a three second area, having a tough time coming out to the open floor, chasing people. Haywood's going to get a blow as Okalaja takes over. He just picked up his third foul. Sophomore, Greensboro. Purdue up by three with the ball on a fresh shot clock. Good spacing. Look at that spacing. Can't give a lot of help with the spacing they have. Gardner not close. Owens with a rebound. Max Owens, if he develops and gives him another positive player in their rotation, that just elevates him a little bit more. As I said, came here a big time high school rep. Maybe Tracy McGrady in high school. And take it. Was quiet over the last couple of minutes. For three, right on line, but a little bit long in Mayfield with a long kick. Got Cardinal on the left. Eldridge instead. But another try at the offensive end for the smaller group of water makers. Let's get some motion. Let's get some motion offensively. A couple of low scoring games tonight out of the garden. The defense is really so sophisticated. Teams really work down on a defensive end. You don't get a lot of open looks without being challenged by a good basketball team. The take away by North Carolina, but they can't control it as it emerged on the entry to McQuay. Same thing you play against Duke. They're going to challenge you on every shot. You're not going to get just a quick look and be wide open without a hand in your face. Tight one in the second half by doubleheader. Watermaker still clinging to a three-point lead and expanded to as many as nine early in the second half. Purdue 50% from the floor in the second half so far. Right after our basketball from the Garden, the championship of the Maui Invitational. Ooh, the Maui, wow. Syracuse beat Michigan, Indiana, topping Utah by a three. So Syracuse, Indiana. Indiana ranked 13, Syracuse 18. That's coming up right after. The Chase preseason NIT. Luke Rector coming up with some big buckets down the stretch for Indiana when they were trailing. Big East versus the Big Ten. Hey, I'm going to call Billy Raftery. I'll be right back. I'm going to call him up and tell Bob Carpenter. Get a message. He's supposed to get me an autographed baseball in a bath from Mark McGuire. He did all the Cardinal games. See you later. That was his call. Come on, Raft. Give me that, that ball. It'll count as McQuay wrestled it away inside. I tell you, McQuay's really going to help this club. I'll tell you one thing. That Juco player is going to be a positive guy on the inside. He's got good jumping ability. Knows how to score inside. Played at a good junior college, something I don't know. Lang picking up his fourth on this one. So you're going to watch the play away from the ball. Not trying to get inside position against Lang. There's McQuay. It's a little fadeaway J. Come out of Gary. 
Indiana. One of my favorite players came out of Gary. Played for the New York Knicks. I love Dick Barnett. Barnett with that, that unbelievable left-handed jay. What about the little kick at the end of the shot? Oh, he just lost Red Holzman. Just sad to see Red pass on. What a team they had in 69. What a great coach. Good on unselfishness. That team with the Busher and Bradley and Willis Reed and Frazier and Monroe and Barnett. And this guard is jumping with joy. Gamble with a great look inside. Hayward couldn't handle it. And called the timeout to maintain possession. Yeah, it's pretty tough. You throw the ball down to the seven-footer by his ankle. Now he becomes a five-foot-two player instead of a seven-foot player. You've got to really understand that and get the ball up to him so he can do something with it. Big possession right now for North Carolina. Down six. Dick, you were just talking about the 1969 championship team and their coach, Red Holzman. What a legacy. Oh, he was just brilliant on that sideline. Such an understanding, and the players loved him. And he was he had, player's coach. You're right about that. No question. And he had a great way of communicating to his players how to make the extra pass. I mean, they swung the ball side to side and put a clinic on. You know, I heard an interesting radio show the other day on ESPN. Tony Kornheiser does a phenomenal job. And he had Brett Musburger, my partner, on from ABC. And they were talking about quickness, and Brett made a great point. In football or basketball, quickness is so important. If you don't have quickness, it's pretty tough to survive against the great teams. You're born with it or you don't have it. Well, that's the one area I bring that up because the one thing looking at North Carolina right now, and I think that's what Ron Curry is going to bring to them. Ron Curry's going to bring a winner's attitude, and he's going to bring great athletic ability and superb quickness. Something that's going to be a big plus for this team. Well, the outcome of that game on Saturday against North Carolina State will tell them whether or not he's going to rejoin the team on Sunday or a lot later because they'll become bowl eligible. Three six wins if they beat North Carolina State. They lose for a Georgia on Sunday. They're back to New York. Shot clock down to five. This is the first. Gonna shoot it. Game over. Shoot it. And Okolajo will give him another try at the offensive end. Good positioning right there by Adamola. Six point lead for the Bordermakers. But the Bordermakers already have North Carolina in the bonus the rest of the way. Throw North Carolina's high. only got 14 fouls. Throw the high lob inside the Hayward. They can't handle him inside. Just throw the high lob up there, Joel. Cornell flipping the hip of Cota, who's headed to the line. You're going to see them right now trying to swing the ball side to side. See if, you know, I would look inside. You're going to watch the reverse and get in the gap. There's the turn. It's fouled on a play. I love Eddie Cota. I'll tell you, I love players that know how to get everybody involved or extension of coaches. The prototype really outstanding college point guard was Bob Hurley. They played at Duke. He was with the right people with Lakeland and Hill and company, but he could make the open shot and knock down the three-pointer if it was there. He was able to stomp the offense with his defensive ability, and he also created opportunities for his teammates. Gene Candy drawing the response of Tim Higgins on the sideline. The Purdue coach very upset. Who, oh, Gene get upset? Yeah. He, no, Gene Katie get close. upset. Come on, Joel. Oh. Gene Katie, come on. Lane. Lane, after the miss, timing it perfectly. Is that so size? a three-point play as it turns out for the Tar Heels. You've got the deficit in half down to three. Is that size? See, again, they're going to try to get Hayward away from the basket. Bring him away. He's trying to zone up inside. Oh, you don't want to bring it in there. Got to kick it back out. Got to kick it back out. No! Hey, he said, no, 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 Dick. I'm taking it right to the big guy. Look at McClay coming up big. He's a leaper just like his brother. He's at 6'7", 215 pounds, Greg McClay. See, right there, though, Mr. Hayward didn't get his hand up. He didn't get that hand up. Should have got the hand up on him with that great size at seven feet, and then you extend the hand. Now, watch. You don't see the hand come up, do you? Maybe. Let's see. Let's see if the hand comes all the way up. Let's see if the hand comes up. Well, yeah, I guess it did. It did. He got the hand up. I got one eye, so I'm deserved that. You know, I get a turnover here right now with the one eye. <laughs> I'm allowed that. I'm allowed that. We'll give it to you. Give me a turnover. Foul on Mayfield, his third, since Coder the free throw line converting on the front end, earning the second. After this, though, the rest of the way, it's two free throws. Every trip to the line. They're shooting here in the second North half. North Carolina. Picked it up, shoots 57% clubs in the second half. Better execution. You get better ball movement, you're going to get better shots. Back to a three-point ball game. Dota coming through the strike, and it's thrown away by Lewis. Cornell up this time. Maybe Lewis going to have playing time, the freshman. Not a ton of hope. Well, Gene Cady's squad only had one turnover after the first 20 minutes of play. 
They've had seven already. Just about a little more than 14 minutes here in the second half. Let's see if the Dr. Danny can check Miss Dakota. He went a little clear out, got a little one-on-one. -on -one. Dakota's trying to crowd the Conn Jackson's stand. Lines up on the ball. I'll tell you, always made that little bounce pass on the interior. He's the best interior point guard in passing the basketball I've seen in college the last year or so. He makes that great entry for the interior. Cornell for three. And Hayward's got the board. A size, baby. Don't want to bring it down, though. See, doesn't want to bring it down, and he becomes 16. Cardinal with the foul. Hayward with the line as Carolina with the opportunity to take the lead since very early in the ballgame. He's got to get that ball up, protect it, and get it up, and spread those elbows and arms, baby. Look at Jane Kennedy. Look at that cop. He can't believe it. He's got the jacket on yet, though. He's got the jacket on. Look at Hayward getting a good inside position. Now spread his body. Little spread eagle. Now protect that basketball. Bring it up. Oh, he got attacked. He gets mugged. He gets mugged. He gets mugged there. Look at Eddie Coda right now. Wheeling deal. Look at the little bounce pass. Oh, great vision. Great vision to make that little bounce pass. Lang with the conversion. I love the way he's stroking that free throw. He's getting the good arc, the good follow through, the good rotation. Coming a little animated now, getting that confidence. Ties it at 47, a new career high for Brendan Haywood with 20 points. And tries to give Carolina their first lead. It's the opening 10 minutes of play when they're on top 17 to 16. He's going to go to double-double. See, I could see them at times with Coda and with, with Curry defensively now attacking people because Curry is dynamite defensively. I mean, he really gets after the basketball. And the quarterback. Eftemore can pass the basketball as well, so he's going to be a plus for this North Carolina team. First lead for Carolina since the first 10 minutes. Well, let's see who's going to challenge and play Stanford in that final on Friday. The Cardinal prevailed in a tough one against St. John's, pulling it out in the last minute. College basketball warming up big time, Mr. Myers. Going to take me out to dinner tomorrow with Ray Tipton, our producer for Turkey. What do you call Ray? Air ball to McQuay and Carolina taking control of things. That's a little air ball time. Go down with a beat on Lewis. Got 30 people here and needed more tickets, he said. 30 wasn't enough. Timeout, North Carolina. Coda gave up the dribble. He needed it. Well, you're taking us out for dinner, right? You and Ray Tipton, but unfortunately, our producer, you guys are not paying for it. I know that. The NIT's paying for it. You're covered. That's all you need to know. You're covered. I know your beautiful wife, Carol's here, and JJ and Drew, your children. They're psyched. They're Mine ready. is spread all over the country. I'm going to say happy Thanksgiving to my family. My wife is down in Gainesville. My daughter's in Gainesville. My other daughter's in Los Gatos with her boyfriend, Thomas Crew. I want to say, hey, happy Thanksgiving to the family. I haven't had Thanksgiving home in over 10 years. Well, Dick. The reason you're not at home for Thanksgiving oh, is because you never miss a game anywhere. 450 more if you'd like on ESPN's College Basketball Full Court Pay-Per-View. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. i got to get my guy, Digger Phelps, to get this for me. He's going to buy this for me. Well, that's your Christmas gift from all of us at ESPN because, as we all know, Dick Vitale doesn't get enough college basketball. <laughs> so he will have the full court pay-per-view. i got to get more hoops, baby. I need more hoops. Digger's buying it for me. I know he is. Now, huge possession. North Carolina by a point. Oh, he's a for Cable, but Cardinal was there, and Cable came over his back. They tried to get a back screen. Purdue did a good job reading it, anticipating it. Purdue's going to win a lot of games again. This guy can flat-out coach on that sideline. You better come prepared to play against Purdue. He was ready. Out of the timeout. McQuay takes a break. And the young man who was real solid in the first half, not many minutes in the second half, comes in Cameron Stevens in crunch time. Sophomore from Fort Wayne who sat out last season. Yeah, you know, last year as a Prop 48, he couldn't practice with the team, so it's a big adjustment trying to get that playing time early in the year. Inside of four minutes left. Zone, zoning right now. They're going to match up and find Cornell. Cardinal follows his own. That's Is he a, ever active? Mr. Tenacity, he's tough as can be. You got to match up on Cornell. You don't want him to spot up against this zone. He can hurt you big time with the 22. They're zoning right now. They're going to match up. See, Coda's right up on him. Coda knows he can shoot the ball. Scouting the court. Eldridge. 
And Gable going to get it with Cardinal. And they actually say it went over the backboard. So Carolina's got it when we come back with a one-point lead. Three and a half minutes left, just like the first game. It's going to go down to the wire. North Carolina leading by a point of the Boilermakers of Purdue in the first game. Stanford, they trailed most of the contest. Finally, overtook St. John's to win it by two. A couple of players, though, injured at the tail end of the Stanford-St. John's game. One for each team, Eric Barkley, the sensational freshman, suffered a concussion. They're hoping he can be available for the consolation game, but it's real inconclusive because there's a hit pointer for Arthur Lee. He may not be available for the championship game Friday night. So our best to both players. And it was a real physical game. No surprise when it's involving Stanford. They came over that screen. That screen that was set up by Sauer. Turning the ball up Barkley. Dota breaking the trap in the backcourt. More than three minutes left. I'll tell you what makes Coda so effective also at the end of the game. He's such an excellent free throw shooter. Well, Galaja, soft touch. Doesn't get the roll. Haywood can't find it either. And will it be saved? Yes, for Purdue. And now Eldridge tries to save it, but Ogalaja has it. And he's smart. Ogalaja immediately takes the basketball and gives it to Mr. Coda. Mr. Coda said, it's my house now. This is my house. We're getting a winning time. I want the rock in my hands, baby. Looking for a pick out top. Instead to Ogalaja. And oh. thrown away by Ogalaja, who was an offensive foul. Tim Higgins with the call right along that baseline. Look at him. Look at him. Put a little show on. Showing how to make that call. We're going to watch right here on the inside. Oh, there's the throw down. See, he throws Stevens to the deck. Good call by Tim Higgins. We got some good officials on this game. Dynamite officials. Watch Higgins, Rick Hartzell, and Ted Valentine. Three of the best. Table now matching up with Cornell. Trying to take away the three point shot with his size. Cornell wants to beat him with the dribble. A little indecision now at the offensive end. Small lineup. Mayfield working Coda on the baseline. He's trying to create an opportunity for someone, Mayfield, to penetration. Long time since Purdue has scored. They're down by one. Stevens, the fall away. Gable kept it alive and right to Cardinal. And now Haywood struggling with his own teammate, Okalaja. The foul on Cardinal's his four. Yeah, Cardinal all over Okalaja. Okalaja comes out of the path with the basketball. Long dry spell for Purdue. This is a great test for North Carolina with so many young players. Playing so hard, both clubs. Look at this. Look how tough they're playing. Don't tell them it's only the fourth game of the season. So three and a half minutes have gone by now for Gene Cady's squad discussing it with Ted Valentine, who works the Big Ten regularly. Those two know each other well. <laughs> and Purdue has not scored a point over the last three and a half minutes. Ogalaja makes the big free throw, steps to that line. See, the one great thing about these matchups in these tournaments, you get the exempt games, but you also get a true evaluation. You get a really good rating system from your coach. He plays the professor's role, and he can rate. He can give a grade out for his offensive half-court game, for his defensive transition, for his execution, for his special teams, in terms of making free throws and attacking pressure. Plus get, free throws by Ogalaja. You get a real evaluation as opposed to just blowing out some people in little Cupcake City. Still a one possession ball game for Purdue, only down by three, despite an 11 2 run for North Carolina. And then Bill Guthridge right now, good decision goes to the zone. It's a good decision if they match up on Cornell. They find him. You've got to find him on a wing because he can flat out knock down that trifecta. He's a PT peer from that three point line. What a ball reversal. That's awesome, baby, the way they swung the basketball. Stevens couldn't finish, but it was last touch by North Carolina. Only five left, though, on the shot clock. I think a Gene Cady team will never get away from you. They're going to hang, they're going to fight you tooth and nail, they're going to scrap and they're going to claw. They're going to reflect his personality. What a football coach he would have been. I think he would have been an unbelievable football coach. Great football player he got. Greg McQuay back in. Mayfield with the shot clock. Oh, It back. Dick Vitale will not give it away. I'll give the rock back. Oh, 
Look at this, Rejection City. Mr. Haywood says it's my night. I'm the star of stars here today, baby. Look at him, look at him, look at him. He's got the shape. He's got that little hair. Look at him. He feels I'm the star tonight. Look at me, baby. Look at me, the Big Apple. Well, that face time way beyond his sophomore years. Wow. He's growing up tonight. This may be a game, a breaking out game for Mr. Haywood. Don't forget a 45 second shot clock during this preseason activity this year, so Coda can hang on to it for a while. He's starting to play like Spencer Haywood instead of Brendan Haywood. And a five second call. He yes. didn't give up the ball all every step of the way. Mayfield was with him. Let me just explain this. If you are six feet away from the offensive player defensively and you are playing a man, the five second count is intact once you're in the front court. And they are calling more and more of that this year because last year, I think the rule was abused. Look at the turnovers here. Only one in the first half for Purdue. Nine in the second half. Big, big difference when you give that basketball up. So 13 to 10 between the two teams. Just about even in giving the ball away. This is great what's basketball. remaining when you talk about timeouts available. Three 30s for Purdue. Two for North Carolina. Man, if we get a tied up situation, the possession arrow also in favor of Purdue. Been some good basketball. I mean, there's been some sloppy play, but very competitive basketball here tonight at the big, big garden. Madison Square Garden, New York City. The Mecca. The home of the world champs, Joe Torrey and the Yankees. Michael K in the house. The place of Cornell for the tie. He can shoot it. Cable and Lane took it away from each other, but Haywood got it. Cornell's the guy you want to shoot the ball for Gene Cady. Now the shot clock taking the game clock only five seconds to play. He's the number one option. See, no count. Now the count starts. Now the count starts. He's in the front court. The count begins. Go so give it up. Needs to start it back out. He does so. Spreading the court. Trying to force the foul. No foul from Purdue yet. One of the best shooters with it now. Coda, the region by Mayfield. And Coda just hit a couple of free throws, and he's back to the strike. And here's where he excels. He said, I'm having a lot of fun playing with this young group. As a look at Bill Ford on that sideline, destined to be a head coach. North Carolina produces some outstanding guys. Look at Phil Ford. You think of Eddie Fogler. You know who gets South Carolina in, uh, in shape. They'll be ready. They're going to be playing Purdue, as we said earlier, in the Jimmy Dean Classic. Think about Roy Williams, the biggest coach right now for St. Charles. What an amazing job he's done with his run at Kansas. Look at the free throw. Are they clutch down the stretch? Are they clutch 10 for 12? Zero for zero. Didn't get to the line. They were too passive in that first half. And go to five at the free throw line. Cutting through down the stretch. And now it is a two possession game with that one. And he go to, well, you make those free throws down the stretch. That's the difference in winning and losing in many, many a game. Brings Heartbreak Hotel to a lot of teams going Brick City on that line. And your lead guard better be a decent free Oh, yeah, too. that's the guy better because we want the ball in his hands. That's an area that Wayne Turner's got to improve a little bit more down in Kentucky. Eldridge for three. The dry spot continues as Purdue has not scored a single point for the last six minutes. As North Carolina is Shake and bake. Here he goes. He was shake and bake in New York City. And he told her. He's home, baby. He's home. Sweet home, Freddy C. And the Heels are going to march on against Stanford in the final. Great effort by Purdue. A great effort by Purdue. But North Carolina's size, Haywood was so tough to defend on the inside. So a couple of large groups down to the baseline. We're going to be getting together. Right here on Friday night, 9 30 Eastern on ESPN. Wow. The championship game of the Chase preseason NIT. He's talking about some banging, some bruising on Friday. I'll tell you that consolation game is going to be excellent as well. Purdue and St. John's. If you like basketball, get out to the big garden. I'll tell you, the NIT people do a first-class job. I can't say enough what quality people Jack Powers and his committee. They do a great job. 7.8 seconds left. So one more for Ed Goda to make it a three-possession contest. It's already over, though as they celebrate on the North Carolina bench. I'll tell you one thing. This team is going to be better than a lot of people, I believe, projected after losing Jamison Carter and Shaman Williams, especially when you add Curry and F. off to that mix. And the development of Haywood inside, things are looking mighty 
good. Nothing could be finer than to be from Carolina. Oh, they just keep rolling on, baby. They just keep rolling on. It's the Pac-10 and the ACC on Friday night on ESPN in North Carolina. Held Purdue scoreless over the final six and a half minutes of the contest. And they win it by seven of the Boilermakers, 54 to 47. So that is our matchup on Friday night. North Carolina and Stanford, Indiana Syracuse championship game of the Maui Invitational coming up next on ESPN. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dick Vitale and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. Have a great Thanksgiving Day, everybody, tomorrow. We'll look forward to seeing you once again on Friday. But first, we're headed back to the studio to rejoin Bill Vito and Digger Phelps. Gentlemen. Okay, Joel and Dick, thank you very much.